finally back in the wood turning room and I'm pleased to say the neighbours are thankfully feeling much better and recovered from the dreaded Covid. A while ago I made a garden dibber and when I had finished I decided it looked very much like a croquet mallet. A small child sized croquet mallet but a croquet mallet nonetheless. And since then I have had the idea in mind to make a wooden ball. If I can make a wooden ball, it will be worthwhile making two more garden dibbers to use as croquet mallets so me and the grandson can have some fun. So today I'm going to try and see if I can make a wooden sphere to play a game of croquet with the grandchildren. Now this is just a plastic ball pool ball, but this sort of size would be fine. Let's see how I get on. I want to see if I can make a sphere, a ball, a circle. So I'm starting with a little piece of wood. The same as I was using a few weeks ago, making little tiny shallow dishy trays. So first thing, I'm going to mount my face plate onto my piece of wood. Centre-ish. There, that'll do. Oh, you're a bit wobbly. Okay. Where should we screw you? To avoid that wobble. There and there, I think. Let's see what we get. So, apron, your defenders, face shield, and my gloves. So, using my roughing gouge, I'm turning this square piece of wood into a round piece of wood. And no, it's not a ball, but this is going to help us make our ball shape. Fit a little skew chisel, I'm going to flatten out the bottom a bit. Now, using my skew chisel, I'm going to make the bottom of this slice of wood lovely, flat and smooth. So I was making a bowl. This would be good. Aiming to get is a disc of wood, at least that size. Just take a bit more off the side. Okay, I have decided I'm going to take this off the face plate and remount my nice flat cut side onto that. Because if you remember when I first mounted my face plate, my piece of wood was a bit rocky and to, uneven. Because I created this very flat side here, I've still got a bit of a curve with the bark notches off but that's going to be okay so, this is a bit rough and bumpy I want a really smooth flat surface so I'm going to remount this side I don't imagine I'm exactly centered here the same as I was on this side so I'm going to give it a quick turn with a roughing gouge just to balance this out again. Using the roughing gouge again just to true up that edge since I've turned my block of wood around and the skew chisel to flatten the bottom. Well the bottom edge. Now this time I've only skewed part of the way in. I'm happy to leave this centre nub sticking out. I'm about to carve it all out 
as though I were carving a bowl. Bowl carving. I need to move you. Put you at the other end. Now to carve out the middle of this piece of wood. A bit like carving a bowl. Well, exactly like carving a bowl. I'm making a very shallow slope on the sides though. Kind of like an upturned pyramid. Not sure how else to describe it, but you'll see in a minute. And yes, I'm using my bowl gouge for this. I've settled into the bowl gouge and quite enjoy using it now. When I first had it, it felt most peculiar and I wasn't keen at all. Much preferred the roughing gouge and skew chisel combination. I love it when I get curly curly wood shavings. I know I'm getting it right for a change. So how is that looking? I think, um, can I go any deeper? What can I use? This will do as a measure. On the edge, sort of there. Just a tiny bit more to take out of the middle. I'm a little nervous I might go through the bottom and I definitely don't want to be doing that. I think I'm going to stop there with this. I will give it a thick sand paper just to make it super smooth. Now the reason I've made this shape piece is when I start carving my wooden ball I want to be able to fit my ball piece into here and however large around my ball is or however small it gets it's going to get gripped by this cup yes I'm happy with that we'll, we'll give that a go A quick sanding and this piece will be done. So here's my piece carved out and I'm going to use this to help me make a, a wooden sphere or ball. I suppose you could do it with a lump of resin as well, it doesn't have to be wood. And the other day, just to see how I got on, I have already made a second one or a first one like this so now I have two now they're possibly not identical but they're similar enough I don't know what they're like for size yeah maybe a millimeter smaller than one I made the other day but they are actually the same depth which was accidentally interesting <laughs> so these two are probably mildly different which is fine and what I want these for is I'm going to keep this one on its faceplate and somehow set this up on the tailstock, but I'm not sure how. And as I'm carving my piece of wood, I can have it set between these two and carve in the middle. Turn the ball carve the middle, turn the ball, carve the middle and hopefully, theory has it, I should end up with a sphere. Now I might end up with a tiny little sphere like a marble or hopefully a decent ball size sphere that may even be slightly bigger than my scooped out cup which will be fine, it'll still sit in here securely, we hope. So I don't know, let's see. Now, for my first practice attempt at making a ball, a sphere, I already have this chunk of wood that I previously turned into this shape and it broke on me. This is only part of the thing I was making. It snapped, I had a long spindle here and it snapped. So, but I hung on to this bit of wood and thought it might be useful for something eventually. Well, here's the eventually. So I've already started making a bit of a round shape with it. So I'm going to use this as my first trial attempt. 
I'm firstly just going to take the saw to it and cut it off this piece of wood probably there at the narrowest point I'll be able to fit this in between my two blocks of wood start turning and see what we end up with tiny little wood marble <laughs> I've just noticed I look half naked I do have clothes on <laughs> just is a bit warm I'm in a little strappy top probably not safety advice but there we go <laughs> so my very rough starter vaguely ball shaped piece of wood just saves a little carving for today Zoom. right now and my ball very rough but it's a trial that will go there and this comes up to meet the centre I have marked a centre point in my tailstock piece of wood. Now, if I'm not squeezing them together hard enough, my chisel hits this, the ball will stick and these will just spin. So I don't know how, I'm gonna need to be quite tight. This is my worst one, it's likely to rock around. I don't have a fixed point here, I don't know. Let's just make this super tight and let's see what happens. Let's get dressed again. Ear defenders, my gloves, and my hat. Definitely want my visor. No idea what this is going to do. Does that fit in there? Oh yes, a little bit of space. Slowly. Let's just see what happens. Now back with the roughing gouge to round up just the very centre of my ball piece of wood. Well, it's not a ball yet, but hopefully it will be. I'm also using my slightly narrower roughing gouge. It fits better in the gap. A little bit of skew chisel just to get near those edges. How are we looking? Well, nice and round or the bit we can see anyway definitely more of a cylinder than a sphere at the moment though i'm going to move this around it's still pretty rough i've i've, I've moved the ball there's the piece we were cutting so now i'm going to cut a slightly different rotation See what happens. We'll use the big one again for a minute. Now I've rotated the centre block to a different angle and I'm going to carve it again, making that new angle nice and round. When it's spinning fast, I can see a shadow of this here. And I think I need to be carving that away anywhere that there's a shadow showing. It's a little fine area. I'm going to bring my skew chisel in so I can get in at that there. Now I'm just repeating more of the same. Turn my piece of wood, carve round the edge. Turn my piece of wood, carve round the edge. Well, not quite the edge, more the centre of my sphere. Lots of stopping and starting. less ball shaped than I was when I started. <laughs> I need to carve in these edges. I don't know which way to turn it. <laughs> I've still 
like shadow ghosting happening there. I'm going to turn us a bit more. I don't know which way. Uh, could take that back. I don't really want to. Ah, there we go. Nice big turn. We'll turn it there and see what I get. Lots to take off here. It's certainly going to be a quirky lump of wood when I'm finished. I move it in here. Yay! This thing's not sitting straight at all. More concerned about that than anything. This tailstock end block keeps rocking around. It's secure, it's just not stable. Knock this out. Just putting that very squiffy, but we'll see what happens. Lots more turning and stopping and turning and stopping and turning and stopping. But things are starting to take a much more ball like shape. As it does, I'm gradually taking less and less off each time to round it up. Let's do a complete turn of the ball. Amazing! I thought that had come through the bottom, but it hasn't. Actually, I'm very lumpy and knobbly, but it definitely got potential. It's feeling very round. It's very rough, but I can see it's got potential. And actually, it is quite a bit rounder than I started with. My biggest problem is my cheeky lathe and securing this fixed at this side without it wobbling around. Now, I don't know if there's anything I can do about that. What if I put, no, if I put, now I had, that's interesting, that's the face plate that came with this lathe and its end thread fits on there, that might create less wobble here, could I just use pressure to hold that all in for a minute? No, because I cut into there and this is going to spin. I... This was my glue block and I don't tend to glue block things anymore. I carve a little bit out the middle of there just to grip the ball. Let's give that a go. Carving a small dent out of the middle of my old glue block. I've just made a small divot in this one, hopefully just enough to grip the roundness of the ball, stop it flying out, I hope. Let's back up, that fits on there, and this will go in here, no it won't, ball, right which bit of ball do I want to carve, I think I'm going to go that way. I'm going to give it I'm going to 
going to stick with this one, my old original, because it's narrower. And now we're back to rotate and carve, rotate and carve, rotate and carve. It's definitely greatly improved now that I have the old faceplate fitted over my tailstock. Told you, I'm going to end up with the marble. <laughs> Actually, I'm quite happy with that. There's something round. <laughs> I feel like as mystic there. I've got a lot of curve and gap here, but not much on this side of the sphere. But of course, just realised this side is sitting in a much deeper dent in a hole, whereas this side is only in a tiny little shallow divot. So it is pushed further out from the supporting block. So I need to trust what I see, how they spin it. We're getting better. What lumpy bit there? Let's have a look at that. Put it that way. This setup is holding it much more stable. What I'm looking for is as this spins, I'm taking my chisel into what looks like nothing. But I can feel it's cutting into the wood. When I can actually see I'm physically touching wood, that's far enough I need to stop. Just a little bit more. We're nearly done. Oh, my sound's gone all strange. It doesn't match the picture. Never mind. As I say, we're nearly finished. We are slowly getting there. The concept works. I think, although we're still pretty rough, I'm going to start using some rough sandpaper to bring this into its final shape. It's pretty good. <laughs> I'm actually very pleased with it. That made a massive difference using the original faceplate and probably ruining the threads on this screw, I don't know. It's got, but maybe it just sits. I don't know, I think it might be okay. Because there's a little flat edge here on the rim that meets this flat edge here. That's been the game changer. And the little shallow dent. I didn't need to go anywhere near as large as this, or certainly not for this size of ball. This little tiny shallow dent is enough to grip it. Once we get a bit, <laughs> once we get a bit ball shaped. I'm going to take to this with a sandpaper, probably, I don't know, let's see, not a 120, something harsher than that. And it's start with a really rough 80 grit because we've still got a really rough ball. Let's see if I can make a difference. So, back in your spot, you. Now using sandpaper, I'm going to do the same again. Turn it, sand it, turn it, sand it, and turn it, sand it. And I've also got the hoover to suck up that dust. And here we have it, a ball. Not perfect, but a ball. Well. Uh, that's me, I'm done for today, I've had enough. <laughs> oh my, well, let's take my apron off first. 
So you can see I am actually wearing some clothes. <laughs> so my first wooden ball. It is not perfectly spherical. And I'm sure I'll do a bit more work on it, sanding it to a beautiful sphere. But for a first attempt, yes, proof of concept. It works. I've learned a couple of things. I don't need such a big deep divot in my supporting blocks of wood. This might be good if I'm making a much larger sphere. This would be good. But for the smaller sphere that I was aiming for, I don't need such a big dent or cut out in my supporting block. The little tiny divot that I put into my old glue block and faceplate worked really nicely. Now when you start your very rough ball, you might want something a little bit deeper than this. A little bit wider in circumference. But I don't know, because I'd already made a reasonably round ball when I got to this stage. That was my biggest problem, was having this wood block on my tailstock with just a single point. This was moving around far too much. Largely because of my cheapy lathe. But it might happen on any tailstock with just a single point. I really don't know. But for me, using my original faceplate that get, came with this lathe, because it's, it didn't screw on to my tailstock, but it did fit comfortably with this little flat edge around the thread. That gave me a much more stable block on the tailstock end. I was perfectly fine on the headstock. That screwed into a faceplate and kept really stable and still. Tailstock was giving me problems, so this solved that problem for me on my cheapy lathe. And I'm actually very pleased with that. Now the reason I want a wooden ball is to make a little croquet set for the grandchildren and myself to play with. And this is going to be perfect. I don't really want anything much bigger than this for them walloping around. <laughs> and even a bit rough, it'll just make the game more fun when it doesn't go when you want it to go. <laughs> no, I shall sand this, whoop, losing me wood block. I shall sand this down a little bit more and gradually make it rounder and rounder and hopefully not much smaller. And I'm definitely going to be making some more. Now we know how to do it and you can do it and it does work. So another wood turning video that in the end I'm very pleased. <laughs> so that's it for today. Bye for now and thanks for joining me. I will see you next time. And remember, whatever you're doing, have fun doing it. If you've enjoyed today's video, don't forget to click that like button and let me know. Click subscribe and YouTube will make sure you see my next video. Bye for now and thanks for watching. And don't forget, whatever you're doing, have fun doing it.